Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the In Your Series. One day you wake up, you find a small crack in the wall of your house. You tend to ignore it, thinking that it must be something uh, not so worrisome. Another day, another thing. Same thing happened. You tend to ignore it again. One day you see huge cracks running through your wall. What is happening is beyond your comprehension. The land beneath you seems to be going through earthquake tremors, but it is not an earthquake. In fact, it is the land beneath your feet that is sinking. Now, it all sounds like a story, a horror story indeed, but it is not something that is a story. It is the reality of Joshimat. Joshimat, the sinking town of India, it is about to collapse. Many families have been made refugee in their own country. And this is a cause of concern, not only for the people, but for the government and Uttarakhand Himalayas as a whole. What are the geological reasons and anthropological reasons, anthropological interventions, which have made this situation possible enough? We will discuss that. So, without any further ado, these are the many topics that we are going to discuss. We will, of course, talk in brief about Joshimat, the current status as of in the morning. Then the reasons behind it. This is a land subsidence phenomenon. We will talk about it from the perspective of world and India, the effects and about Uttarakhand Himalayas. These are not very stable portion of the Himalayas also. And in the comment segment, you will get a question. Why is Joshimat sinking? Experts say warning bells started ringing from 1976. And they were ignored by the people, by the government, until and unless the cracks became huge enough to ignore. So, let's move ahead and first of all talk about Joshimat. This is a town. This is a town that is located in the state of Uttarakhand in Chamoli district. It is 1890 meters above sea level. And as you can see, it overlooks very important region of, um, we can say, rivers flowing through the Himalayas especially Alaknanda and Dholi Ganga, all right. And the Rishimesh Badri, uh, Rishikesh Badrinath National Highway runs through it. It is also renamed as, nicknamed, wouldn't call it renamed, but renamed as Jyotirman. It is the winter seat of Lord Badri, whose idol is brought down from Badrinath temple to the Vasudeva temple in Joshimad. And it is one of the four months, we can say, that has been established by eight century spiritual leader Adi Shankaracharya ji. Here also you will find the Kapil Vriksh which is said to be 12,000 years old, the oldest temple to ever exist. Moving ahead, if we discuss that what is the current status of Joshimat. First of all, it is in the Uttarakhand Himalayas. Secondly, it has been declared a landslide subsidence zone. We will discuss about that in detail. More than 60 families living in uninhabitable houses have been evacuated. At least 90 more families will have to be evacuated as soon as possible. The worst hit regions include Manohar Bhag, Marwari areas and Sindar. Now recently only the Prime Minister of India held a high level meeting uh, engaging the situation in Yoshimat. Now the Prime Minister's office say that says that it is of utmost importance that first the people should be evacuated from the region then only some things can be done about it. Now, the number of houses developing cracks in the home have risen from 561 to 610 and the strip of land which is the most impacted is around 350 meters. Alright, this is the recent, uh, we can say data. The reasons, let's see the reasons, there are numerous, uh, according to a 2022 study, there are numerous heavy layers of overburdened material covering the areas near Joshimad. Okay, Yoshimad, just know one thing, it is on a fault, it is situated on a fault. It is not stable, it is not peninsular India. And we know that Himalayas are relatively very young as we compare it to our stabler peninsular region. And the rivers there have brought out debris along the regions. And this town has been actually made upon the debris which has been brought down by various rivers. So it is not something that is stable. It can, its tensile strength is only so much, so you know, so much to hold certain group of houses. 
the level of infrastructure that is being developed over there it's not co congruent to that okay so remember that so it's on a fault it's on the river debris the soils boulder it is not a stable region okay local geologists and scientists have been raising alarms for decades the earliest one to be from 1976 so the government now we can say had more than enough time to do something about it and even people also so mishra commission's report says that joshima is situated uh, on the site of an ancient landslide so whenever we know when the soil uh, whatever the soil is uh, you can say uh, deposited because of a landslide because of an ancient landslide how much time will it take for that amount of soil to go through subsidence again and this report is from 1976 moving ahead geography first of all is the main region reason that geography of there of that place is not stable it is not allowing so much of intervention landslide debris it is it has a low bearing capacity okay then it cannot support a high rate of construction also and also there is because in the recent year years constructions have become more increased the rate of construction has increased hydroelectric projects there is a scramble to gauge or to tap the hydroelectric potential of this region and we know many important rivers flow through Uttarakhand so that is why more and more hydropower projects are also being launched and the widening of the national highway is one of the causes anthropogenic causes as i said erosion which has been brought by streams flowing from vishnu prayag and sliding along natural streams has made the soil loosened and boulders gneissic rocks loose soils these all have covered the area so people think that it is a habitable zone it is not vadia institute of himalayan geology con conducted a survey in 2022 in which they said that the area the gneissic rock which is settled in Joshimat is easily weathered that means it can easily erode it can easily crack away it is not stable it is not cohesive it cannot support this much of construction and it has a propensity for high pore pressure when saturated with water especially through winter so whenever there will be water deposition in this knee stock the propensity of it getting saturated and dissolving is very high so that is why this region is not stable now land subsidence according to the united states geological survey it says that it is a gradual settling or sudden sinking of earth surface now this could be due to removal or displacement of subsurface material earth materials and this is not the problem of india this is a problem for the entire world specifically if we talk about usa then around 17000 square miles in the 45 us states have been directly impacted by subsidence so it is a global phenomenon now it is most often caused by removal of water oil natural gas or mineral resources out of the ground which have taken place in Joshimat. also this this entire uh, you can say output is taken out with the help of pump, pumping fracking and mining activities as well so it uh, completely shatters the geological structure of that place okay and then natural events are also one of its reasons earthquake and we know himalayas are very prone to earthquake because of the subsidence of the indian plate beneath the eurasian plate okay and soil compaction erosion sinkhole formation all this uh, these are the natural reasons by which land subsidence takes place then uh, it's not only for the himalayas in india mind you certain parts of delhi and Kapashera near the Indira Gandhi International Airport has also gone through it. At the rate of 11 cm per year, if we compare it to current, the current one, it has grown, the subsidence rate has grown to more than 17 cm per year. Okay, so uh, right now, as in from 2014 to 2016, it was 11 cm per year. Then from 2016 to 18, it was 17 cm per year. So that means it can take, a, take place sooner or later. So unregulated pumping of underground water and rapid pace of urbanization is one of the reasons, not one, two of the reasons why India is seeing land subsidence. Moving ahead, if we have to discuss the future of it now, according to a research by 2040, 8% of the world's surface will be impacted by land subsidence. Now approximately 1.2 people, 1.2 billion people are living in this 21% of the major cities across the globe. 
worst hit continent will be Asia with 86% of the Asian population bearing the brunt of it and that will cost about 8.17 billion, uh, 8.17 trillion not billion trillion to be in danger. Now first of all we have to talk about the impacts of landslide as well before moving forward. It causes the settlement of clay on the upper layers whenever land subsidence happens clay will be uh, first of all settling in the upper layer and that leads to damage of infrastructure such as roads and buildings. Flooding can also happen if the drainage system of the city is not very uh, you can say robust. So flooding can also happen and it will impact the houses and other infrastructure as well making them weaker having cracks in them. So this is what exactly is happening in Joshimat moving ahead. It leads to the weakening of the foundation or develop, developing the crack. It can also lead to earthquakes. Okay, And a 2014 report has stated that land subsidence has already caused a loss of around 15 billion dollars in China. Moving ahead, now if we have to talk about Uttarakhand Himalayas, there are around 900 glaciers in Himalayas. So that means the soil will always be impacted by the rivers which flow through these flow because of these glaciers. It covers approximately 2857 square kilometers of the geographical area. Because of the receding of the glaciers, lessening of the glaciers, moving back of the glaciers, what is happening? That has ensured that a lot amount of sediments remain in Uttarakhand. So this sediment is brought down by the river, by the glacier. When the glacier moves back, the area has nothing but the sediments. So when people go there, they think that this is the perfect place to build something or live here. So that is not the case with Yoshima. I mean, you cannot live there because there is sediment. It generates destructive floods under unusual weather events because the glaciers tend to ensure whenever flooding, whenever monsoon comes and uh, whenever there is sedimentation, sedimentation uh, enough that it will support this monsoon water to flow down Again, glaciers will play a part in it. All right, so that makes the soil loosen. Already, we have seen that valley in high Himalayas are clogged with enormous quantities of loose sediments. First, because of glaciers, the seeding of the glaciers, and second, also because of anthropogenic activities, leaving the sediments over there. Whenever construction happens, the bulldozer will pluck out, uh, or whatever machine is used, that will pluck out the sediments and leave it there only. So it will become more and more burdened. It is ecologically fragile and also geographically or geologically unstable. And there is a scramble among various institutes and organizations to get a hold of hydropower. So that has increased construction over there. Now, according to Ravi Chopra Committee on Hydropower Projects in Uttarakhand Himalaya, this is what I have to read because it has data. If something comes up to make you understand, I will definitely come. The government plans to harness approximately 27,000 megawatt of potential hydropower from its rivers by constructing approximately 450 hydropower projects and currently 92 projects with a total installed capacity of approximately 3624 megawatt have been commissioned and approximately 38 projects are under construction. Nearly 22 are planned above the elevation of 3000 meters in paraglacial zones which is the area which has been vacated by the glaciers. Glaciers do not exist there anymore that means it is loose sediment which is not in support of such big projects. Now, this kind of thing can happen prospectively as well. So that is why it is important to know all about all this. Moving ahead, now if we talk about the mountain ranges collapsing, the sudden collapse of mountain front Dhenti and in the Madhumeshwara Valley, Madhumeshwari Valley and Varnavat Parvat in Uttar Kashi has shown us how unstable and not ready for construction this area is. Innumerable landslides which are chronic in nature uh, and are in proximity of the river gorges that is said to be in a disaster if such kind of human intervention continues to be there and these can obstruct river at any time and can cause flash floods like in the 1970s by Alaknanda or 1978 by Bhagirathi river. First of all the people should be evacuated, they should be rehabilitated and their life should go on as normal as we can because that is something I am trying to make normalize uh, the fact that they can have a life beyond Joshima. But it is not easy at all. 
just imagine starting your life from the scratch and people there uh, the people who live in the valleys and in the hills are not very suitable to planes they might also get some certain sort of issues in the plane so that is easier said than done i would definitely say but all we can do is look positively and move forward for now then also we have to ensure that we have a disaster management plan because such kind of things can happen not only in yoshimat but other regions of the himalayas as well which are highly susceptible to this kind of land subsidence and also where unregulated construction is going on and also we should understand that yoshimat is very strategically important to india army cantonments are also there so if we lose touch with that region we can also um, um, if we lose touch with that region we can also ensure we have to ensure ourselves that that does not happen to the higher elevated regions of uttarakhand and many other regions which has a border with china so that's all for this episode let me take the names of those who have answered the last question correctly okay so stay with me for a moment correct answer was jammu and kashmir so n vaishnavi puneet rupal ishwar prakash kartik prakash kritika tejasvi superb sanjeev tech hk aaron raj abel gorav singh shanti priya ritesh vani singh simran vishwanathan akhil and barasan anju parun priyanka and rahul have answered it correctly also shirley then tushita hearted hillu and uh, uh, okay if you want to get magazines of drishti you can uh, visit the website and from there you can order it all right bhargavi shubham because hearted hillu asked me this question then navinism sarath mukesh dhruv and nagodi thank you for answering the last question answering the next question again that's it